Welcome back, folks. I know. I know. The background's beautiful. I know. I know the background's beautiful. Today we're going over, uh, we're going to have a conversation. And we're going to discuss what's going on with the market. We're going to discuss kind of a lot of people are getting, a lot of people are being brought into this new sector. A lot of new eyeballs. So today, um, actually a little bit uh, different. This was sent to me by Michigan Hobby. Oh, actually, uh, you can Google it. And these uh, gentlemen's got his own website there with a bunch of uh, everything from flesh and blood to Pokemon, magic boxes, everything. And he sent me these two items to go over a few interesting things. So first of all, I didn't, this, I actually did not pay for these two items. So that's pretty rare on this channel, I know, right? So that's pretty exciting. So first we're going to talk about, first we have, wow, really good packaging job, by the way. Uh, that's something I really, you know, we, we ship a lot of things through the mail, man. It's uh, a lot of boxes really get some uh, dented up and dinged up. So first we got a box of the old Scourgeru over here. Considered one of the weaker, or actually the weakest set in the block of the Onslaught era. What was it, 2002, 2001? What year, how far off am I? Uh, 03! I was one year off. Um, we're in a very different world right now, should I say, folks? Um, the prices of everything, what I feel is due to mostly to inflation and different world events going on, government policy, the value of the dollar, and the, uh, the old school saying of cash is trash and people are trying to spend and get, nobody wants to hold. People who are in stable situations and are not in a very unfortunate situation financially because of the 2020 thing, um, there's a big segment of the market that's looking to park money everywhere. And we're seeing this all over the all over the country, all over the world. And collectibles with Pokemon and Magic and Flesh and Blood are no different. They are getting annihilated. So, um, obviously, uh, a small fun thing. At least you gotta if you are gonna be dealing with some of these older things, you have to be very careful with uh, some of the sources. Not so much when buying like a sealed box like this, because overall, as long as the seal's legit, you got your Wizards logo. Now, remember, there are different Wizards logos. For different years and eras of Wizards products. For example, here's a new Zendikar box. Zendikar set boxes. These things are the hottest thing. Now nobody really cares, so I'm buying them all. So you have the newer, what I like to call the uh, kind of the rainbow squirreled angle. Kind of the curled, it looks like um, it's more of like a swiped across logo. The older logos were just the square stamps. So you have different eras, and of course even older, there were no logos, and you get the old circle seals, and you go back to a different thing. So... Obviously, this particular gentleman, a uh, very nice guy. He's uh, he's really big into the industry, really big fan. He works with a lot of other stores and helping people. And as you can see, he does have really clean condition products on his website and available. Now, this is the interesting part of the video over here. Clean from a booster box we picked out. However, not worth the headache and accusations from buyers. So this ought to be interesting. I'm assuming because this, this is a revised pack. <coughs> Can I open this? I don't want to rip the pack. Is it, okay, okay, never mind, never mind. So, essentially, I'm going to assume it might be worn out or have some wear. He says from a box. Okay, so, overall, so looking at a pack like this, okay, oh, 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 wow, okay, I see what he's saying. Yeah, see, now, this is something that if it does, if it, ugh, like, I wouldn't be able to sell this. I wouldn't, I wouldn't sell it online, um, because essentially put, if a buyer buys this, opens it, it doesn't get a dual land or a wheel of fortune or a you know Mrs. Doppelganger or some sort of fast bond Rudy's fork in his face. You know they're gonna be upset if they pull a lace or you know I don't know some sort of goofy you know dingus egg. You know they're gonna be pretty upset with the results. So yeah, I guess I see what you're saying. Now I can tell you a couple interesting things. Uh, this is actually an authentic pack. Um, this is actually the seal. Actually feels good. This is actually in based on the lack of wear on the top and bottom there. I actually don't even think it's searched. Isn't that interesting? That that kind of in here. I'll get Rudy's tool. Hang on. Mm -hmm. yeah, for some reason I do not. Okay, whatever. Point is, um, these are the type of products you really can't sell very well online. And it's unfortunate, but for example, recently when everybody's been contacting me and I've got all kinds of transactions going on, a lot of people did have individual order booster packs and things like this. And um, unfortunately, I decline. Anyway, if it's not a sealed box, I don't really buy it. If it's a foreign non-English box, I don't buy it. Unfortunately, if you're dealing with heavy sealed product that's international, I'm going to back away also because the shipping cost is going to be outrageous to ship 10, 20 heavy sealed boxes. 
you know, across the ocean or across the world. You see what I'm saying? And unfortunately, booster packs like this, the risk level, like the gentleman says, I mean, look, he even put it in the note. It's just a headache. And that's true. And unfortunately, that is the reality of it. Now, I tend to keep these type of products because they're good case studies and they're good for just personal things long term. And, or if I'm ever going to do a local event or anything, you know, maybe in the future when we're not in this ridiculous time period of viruses and disasters. I know, right? So it's just a weird time, folks. So essentially, again, sealed boxes, very easy, a lot more liquid, very easy to move. When you deal with individual packs like this, you have to be very careful and go with a very trusted source. Now, I want to go over a couple things. It's been years since we've talked about this, and with Revise being the hottest thing ever right now, I want to discuss some things. Usually, usually, not always. So the way pack searching works is essentially you push really down, really, really tight on the white areas on the top and bottom. You push all the cards either the top of the pack or the bottom, depending on how they're facing in whatever type of box you have. Fine, you can read the name of the card. Okay, and then you start taking your nail and you kind of move the first card down, the second card down. Because these packs are first three are uncommons, the fourth one is the rare, the rest are commons. So you're trying to get to that fourth card to figure it out. So usually on really searched packs, when you hold them and look right here, you'll see a lot of wear on the white plastic. See this type of thing right here? This is just machine packing and like a natural little wear. I hate to say that, but it's supposed to be like a tear mark. Although, I think this one just might be a factory error, because that just looks like the machine got caught. But that will freak out buyers. Unfortunately, it is what it is. So when you're looking for searched packs, you want to look for wear on the white area, the white area, and also right here. You want to look for a lot of creases. And you'll know. Like, see how bun bundled together that is? You'll want to look for that kind of wear across here, across here, or here and here. Those are the areas you want to look for. The marks like this, this was very common. Let me get some Fallen Empires. I'm going to show you guys something. So when you deal with this similar thing, you grab a whole handful of packs of Fallen Empires. You're going to notice, because Fallen Empires, again, 8-card booster packs, 60 packs per box, not 36. These are standard 36. Revised were standard 36 also. So you'll notice that a lot of the packs will, will have a lot of wear because they'll be kind of squished and kind of bent in the middle. So this was very common for Antiquities, Arabian Nights, and Legends packs. Well, there'll be a lot more kind of bends on that. But still, see, even though it has bend marks right there, you don't see a lot of firm creases. So, for example, on this particular pack, I'll give you guys an example because, again, you don't search Fallen Empire packs. Nobody cares. So on this particular pack, if I were to search the pack, what you would want to do is I'm going to push all the cards. See this? I'm going to push all the cards to the top. And now that I've done that, I'm going to kind of bend this and I'm going to kind of move like this. I'm going to move and I'm going to hold down the cards and I'm going to let the top card drop. So now I can I can feel I'm like the second, third card in. And then by doing this, you're going to kind of have to push in like this. Now you'll notice when doing that, you're going to start creating little crease marks all across the top there. See, I just created that one. And you can see what's going to happen is, and again, it takes a while to do. And you'll start to notice the wear marks. On this, you don't see that. You see a single line, which is just from the pack being old, but you don't see a lot of little like fingernail dents and lines across the top. And on the back, you don't see it. This doesn't count, and that doesn't count. Anyways, so I hope that kind of gives you guys some interesting clarity on products like this. So moving forward, everyone, like I said, as the hobby continues to expand, just be aware if you're looking for things like this, like this gentleman over at the uh, Michigan Hobby, make sure you're buying from a good source. That is actually not going to actually search packs. Now, I do want to give a couple good kind of last minute comments before we end the video today. Back in the day, Revise was searched the most because it was dual land or bust. This is, you know, Revise is the hottest topic now in 2021. Now, it's not dual land or bust, folks. With Wheel of Fortune, Copy Artifacts, with the Mana Vault, Fork, Fast Bond, the Zuvan Doppelganger. You have so many non-dual land rares and revised that have financial value, that mindset is starting to dissipate. So even packs searched back in the day, that means they were searching for dual lands, by the way. When I say searching a pack, I'm talking about people looking for dual lands. Now that that's shifted a little bit, you have to understand there are even people out there that sell searched packs at a reduced price. Instead of three, four hundred dollars for a revised pack, they'll sell them for 99 bucks and they'll say search no dual land. The world has changed, and those actually could be an opportunity, also. Hope you guys learned something today. Have a good day.